I'm so excited, but then we're always excited. We're at a shrine here in the United States that probably not, none of us know about, and yet thousands of people come here every year and are healed. Uh, during Holy Week, this is one of the most popular shrines in the United States. We're at the Santuario de Chimayo, Chimayo in near Santa Fe, New Mexico. started to write our book on the uh, miracles of the child Jesus and we discovered as we were researching a miracle of the child Jesus that occurred here that there was another gift that we didn't know about when we wrote our other book miracles of the cross and that is the miracles of es Esquipulas. Esquipulas. The, the miraculous cross of Esquipulas. Forgive us, our, our Indian or our Spanish is not that good, but it is a, um, it's a miraculous cross found in an area which contains holy dirt. We have to tell you how it happened. We have to go back to 1813, and this is when this whole thing started. Um, what had happened was that when the Christians were run out by the Indians in 1680, a lot of them buried sacred objects like crucifixes and statues of Our Lady in the ground so that it wouldn't be, they wouldn't be destroyed. The tradition of this particular shrine is that uh, the owner of this property uh, was, was, they had what they called the penitents uh, who would go out at night and they would pray in the mountains. And the, uh, during Holy Week? During Holy Week. And this is Senora Beta, saw a light coming from part of his property. And he, he looked down and, and he and the other men ran down to where the light was and they could see that the light was under the ground. And they started digging in the dirt. Right, with their hands. And they found the top of a almost six foot crucifix. It was amazing. And, and so the uh, Senora Beta just said, now don't, don't anybody touch it, leave it alone. I'm gonna get the, the local priest from uh, Santa, Cruz, Santa Cruz, which was the parish church, have him come over and look at it. So the priest came over, and when he saw the crucifix, they removed the crucifix, and they brought it back in procession to the church of Santa Cruz. miles to bring the crucifix back to the church and when they got to the church because of Santa said, Cruz. It, it is only fitting that it be in a church and so they placed it. Right in the, the main altar, right in, in, in the center of the main altar and everybody was excited and now the word was getting around so everybody wanted to come to the church the next day to venerate this crucifix. Well the next they locked up the church, everybody went home, the next day they opened up the church and the crucifix was gone. And they searched all around where the crucifix could have been, and what do you think it was? Right back here.
So the priest again, and this is 10 miles each way, the, the priest took the crucifix and in procession, hundreds of men followed. They brought it back to the church. Put it in the church, locked up the church. Next day it was gone again. They did this three times. Finally, somebody got the message. Our Lord Jesus wanted the chapel to be built here, not there. And so they were given permission to build a chapel. At the end of the story where the dirt was people started touching the dirt they could sort of feel little light little light coming from the mound of dirt where the crucifix had been and they would put it on areas where they had illness and they were healed tremendous healings took place uh, it started in 1813 and continued The treasure of the crucifix and the holy dirt is inside this shrine, inside this church. And they come. Today, we've been trying to do this documentary, and they're just ongoing pilgrims coming in and out. Um, thousands come. Uh, holy Week, over 100,000 come the, then. The man was telling us that they have to block off two main roads, main highways, the police block it off, and, the, and they have to let the people come in so many at a time because there are just so many people to come. They're all looking for healings, looking for cures, and the cures are happening. The cures are taking place. Uh, Chimayo. Chimayo. Yes, please. Uh, Chimayo is also a very holy place in uh, New Mexico for different reasons. The place upon which the shrine is built had been the site of an ancient Pueblo village, a Pueblo Indian village. And they had a spring of water there that was considered uh, miraculous. 
uh, that uh, dried up and the village was abandoned long before the Spanish arrived. Uh, but when the Spanish arrived, they heard about the legends and they saw the ruins of the village, but they didn't think much more about it. Uh, there was uh, settlements that crept up the river near the village and there was a gentleman by the name of Bernardo Abeta who was given a land grant near the abandoned Pueblo village. And one night when he was returning from the ranch, or the farm, uh, it got dark and he was able to see a tremendous light emanate from the hole where the spring had been. So much like uh, St. Bernadette, he went over and had the impulse to dig in the soft soil. And as he dug, out came a, a large uh, crucifix of uh, our Lord under his title, Nuestro Señor de Esquipula, which is the um, uh, miraculous figure in Guatemala of our Lord appearing to the Indians as the Black Christ, as the Indian Christ. Mm. In other words, doing the same thing that Our Lady did in uh, Guadalupe. And so um, uh, how that devotion came to be in that particular hole, we don't know. But the legend says that the crucifix was taken to the nearest parish church Mass was offered in Thanksgiving. The next day, the crucifix was back in its hole. And this occurred three more times until finally the people realized, well, maybe the, the Lord wants a little shrine here. So there's a shrine there in which the crucifix that was extracted from the hole is above the high altar. And the hole is there, which had been, of course, the spring of water for the Indians and the site where the crucifix was pulled out. I think it's a wonderful symbol of New Mexico in that it combines the spirituality of the Indians and the spirituality of the Hispanics yes, yes. and the healing power of God. Again, another unifying force, Father. Yes. Do uh, our uh, Native American brothers and sisters go there? Oh, yes. Everybody goes there. Everyone goes there. And uh, I was uh, privileged to be part of a, a healing myself there because as a child I had a, a very bad case of eczema that was virulent and yes. uh, life-threatening, and my parents didn't know what uh, to do with it, they took me to every doctor, and then they finally walked to Chimayo. That's the pilgrimage. That's mm -hmm. the sacrifice you make. Yeah, they brought back the dirt. From the cemetery, they go up there. Right? Yeah, no, they walked from Santa Fe to oh, wow. Chimayo, which is 27 miles. God bless them. And uh, mm. they uh, brought back the dirt, and they put it on me, and I was healed. Praise the faith yeah. of your parents. So we used to go up every year in the pilgrimage and Thanksgiving. And to this day, uh, tens of thousands of people walk the pilgrimage, especially around uh, Good Friday. This is the most amazing thing about it. If, if somebody would say to me, there's a place in New Mexico where if you go in and you have a problem, you bring your problem to our Lord Jesus and that place, and you may be healed physically, spiritually, emotionally, or mentally, it's there. Our Lord Jesus is there waiting for you. I would be running like a shot. <laughs> and so they do. Uh, oh, it, yes. I, I just I can't believe the amount of people that come here during Holy Week, but people come every day. Yeah, now, we came day. back. We had to go to the church to videotape where that cross had been put and that disappeared every day in Santa Cruz. And then we said, let's come back here and we can do some talking to, to our, our it's audience. It's bound to be quiet then. It's not. The place is still packed with people. And this will go on all day long. Well, now, initially, uh, Abeta owned the land, didn't he? Right. Uh, and he took care of it. And he, he took had care of the a, chapel. A, well, he had a chapel built a little church over the crucifix. And and a little side, sort of like a where, sacristy, where the, the mound of dirt had been. And he left the hole, left a hole where the mound of dirt is until today. And you'll see it in this program. You can see the, the, uh, the, the little room where the mound of dirt is. And there are even little shovels there where you can take the dirt. People started taking the dirt as, as early as 1814, 1815, and have been taking dirt ever since. Now, where the dirt is, is where the crucifix had been. So the crucifix that you see inside this church on the main altar is just a few feet from the very spot where it was dug out. Now, Mr. Beta and his family took care of this little chapel for years, 
And then uh, when he passed on, it, it went on to another family, the Chavez family. But uh, until they died, until they died, and then there really was no one to take care of the chapel, and it started to become abandoned, it, dis in disrepair. It's, it's not that people weren't coming, but nobody was taking care of it. Until it went into the hands of the the archdiocese, the arch, archdiocese. and the archbishop had a, a a priest of the Holy Family, sons of the Holy Family. His name was Father. Carminio Roca, and you're going to hear him in this program. He shares with us some of the insights that have happened over the 50 years that he's been here at the shrine. He is an amazing, amazing priest, and it's really wonderful to listen to him and to hear how this sanctuary has developed, how what went into it. Now, when this the, the uh, you know the original chapel was too small, it had to be added on to. But in those days, nobody knew about erosion. And so where the altar is right now, there was a cave under from there. Erosion. From erosion over the erosion. years, from water going through and erosion, you had this chapel, but under it, you had a big hole. And so he knew that he had to fill in this hole. Because the building was collapsing, the, the altar was collapsing. As it turned out, they were building a highway right up here. And they had a huge mound of dirt. And he said, don't move that dirt. Okay. Then he... <laughs> yeah. okay, we are... Hello, family. We're oh, here at the we Shemayor. Are... <clears throat> we are so excited. <laughs> We're here at the shrine of the Santuario de Chimayo in uh, New Mexico, near Santa Fe. And we are here with the custodian of the shrine, Father Casimira Roca. And we just before we begin, we want to thank Archbishop Sheen for allowing us this privilege to come to this very holy place with this very holy, charming priest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Father, uh, tell us how this all came about with you. After the mass at seven in the morning, I took the car, I had nothing to do. Yeah. I went straight down to Spagnola. Down to Spagnola, <coughs> right in the, in the highway, there were two men, uh, like, excited, talking to one another. Yeah. Two good Catholic men. Yeah. I knew it already. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, then I do it. and then I turned, because they were baptizing people, the f bringing names. Yes. Yeah, I already had the little crazy priest of Shimayo. <laughs> <laughs> and that was your that was like you. a sense of vengeance at the moment. <laughs> and I went to stop right there. And there you were looking, looking, you want this little priest, the crazy one. <laughs> and I went straight to them. Never said good morning to you. No, no. I said, Do you have faith? What are you talking about? You have been drinking early in the morning. <laughs> Answer my question. Uh, do you have faith? What we are talking? You never read the Bible, I accuse them. Yeah. The Bible say, if you have faith, you can say one mountain. Move from here and go over there, and the mountain obey. Yeah. Well, you are you talking early in the morning. You have <laughs> been dreaming. Yes, I have been dreaming. And you, you are have a little time? Come with me. And they came with us. They came with you. And I talk, now this mountain is here. <laughs> In no time, depends on you. If you can do it tomorrow, then wait after tomorrow. <laughs> but you can move this to the back side of the sanctuary, and I guarantee you the honor to be the savior of the sanctuary of Chimayo. Oh. And now you, you don't answer me what you, what you are going to do. I'll take you back home, yeah. think about it. But if we can do it tomorrow, not to wait after tomorrow. Good for you. A few days later, we caught a van of dumping trunks and loaders. Praise God. They moved the whole thing over 100,000 100, tons. 100,000 tons. They moved the mountain. I, I, the mountain. I, I, I gained at least 25 miles from one side to the other. <laughs> Praise God. And, uh, but when they were finishing, there was a mount of dirt all the way to the half of the, of the church. 
Where are you going to bury my church? No, we move, we'll fix it then. Yeah. Then I said, when they finish the, all the mountain. Yeah, yeah. But I have a problem now. <laughs> you have a problem? No, you are a problem, they told me. <laughs> yeah, but we know what is your problem. You have not a pen in your pocket and no count in the bank. Mm -hmm. Who told you so? <laughs> Everybody does. Yeah, yeah. I have no money at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the greatest answer I received in my life. Yeah. We did this not for you. Mm. We did this for the good Lord. Praise God. Praise. But he had, he had dirt left over. And so in order that he'd be secure, he had two young men come and make two retaining walls. To, and they got rocks and stones from all over the mountains here. They brought them in and they made these two retaining walls, which we're going to show you also. This was done without one penny. No money. We said to him, Father, we want to bring you to Arkansas. <laughs> we have a building project for Sounds you. Sounds like another Mother Angelica. He got a thought, the Lord gave him a thought, and he just went with it. are happening still right yeah. now till right today now. this day and they're within arm's reach they're within a, a day's ride possibly or two days or at the most three days right in our own country there are shrines just waiting for you to come in faith and that Spend was one of the time. things the priest said to these men I'm sorry I should have said that if you have faith that's right. You can do it. You can move mountains. You can move that dirt. Uh, a man did that. His son was in Vietnam, I believe. Uh, and he made, a, uh, he made a deal. You can deal here. We can do deals here. Um, a promise, a if, vow. If my son comes back unharmed, I will carry a six-foot crucifix by foot from one end of New Mexico to this shrine, which is over 150 miles. The crucifix is in this church. A picture of the man with Father Roca is there. The man is still alive till today. His son came home unharmed, and in thanksgiving, he brought this crucifix to the shrine.
Now, people come here in faith. We're telling you, come here in faith, spend time, pray. Just, just take all your, your fears, all your petitions, just lay them out to our Lord Jesus here in the shrine.